Well, thanks those for joining us today. It's just a little after one central. This is John Cooley along with Patricia Gibson, uh, Kansas City co-facilitators for the KC Myotonic Support Group doing a virtual meeting. Today, we've got Susan Whitaker from KU who is a nutritionist and is joining us uh, to present on diet and related questions. So I guess, Susan, before we get started, I want to see if anyone else is like on the phone and is unmuted, could uh, tell us who's joined. I know there were a couple of folks that replied, said they would be on. I so don't know you? if you can, oh. can you hear me? I'm Robin. Oh, hey, Robin. Yes. Hey, what's your last name, Robin? Moss. Moss. Thank you for joining us. Certainly. Oh, there are a couple other groups, but they may may pick up here. So, Robin, I can't remember. Have you been on one of our calls before or one of our meetings? No, I haven't. All right. Do you want to uh, give us a little information about yourself and you know where you live and what what brings sure. your interest to myotonic? Um, I am a registered nurse. I live in Kansas City in Lenexa, Kansas. Um, I uh, I'm a diabetes educator, but I also have myotonic dystrophy. Okay. Great. Well, thank you for joining us. Susan and I, Susan Cooley and I are in uh, Lenexa also. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we're neighbors. Yeah, yeah we're part of Lenexa. I live in Falcon Valley. Oh, okay. Yeah, off of 10th and Woodland. Yeah, we're you know where that is. Okay. Yeah, so we started up this group in, uh, gosh, was that a year ago? Having so much fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we, you know, so we have two sons with myotonic dystrophy and mm -hmm. we had attended a couple of the uh, uh, conference and thought, you know, we need to, to uh, step up and provide support and, and opportunities in the Kansas mm -hmm. City region because the nearest uh, facilitator groups were in either Dallas or Chicago. And that's too far. So we started this group and have been meeting about every quarter. And Patricia Gibson, who's on the phone, had agreed just recently to help, you know, be a co-facilitator, kind of broadening our horizons. And we've been holding the meetings at my office at RSM down the plaza. But obviously not a good time to do that now. So we're trying the virtual. And I've got uh, Susan Whitaker on to, to help us out today. And hopefully we'll be able to pick up next quarter, or at least by the end of the year, perhaps um, something in person. We might be even just try sure. to outside like for a picnic where we could maybe social distance a little easier if that's still in play. But thanks Sounds for joining good. us. Okay, Susan Whitaker, you wanna kick us off with your presentation and I'll run the slides. Yes, well, thanks for having me. Um, I have actually worked with the MDA um, clinic at KU since about, 2000, but I used to see mainly just their ALS patients. But in the last three to four years, um, I've been coming to all of the clinics and have become more, um, oh, I guess, instrumental and um, learning more about the diseases and, and helping um, myself and the speech therapist work together, um, which was really helpful to have both of us together because. As you know, with the myotonic, you can have some uh, speech and swallowing difficulties. So we work together a lot. Um, these are some, um, I put together a little handout presentation thing on some things that John had suggested and things that I see patients asking me or having concerns about when they come into clinic. Um, so some of the things just wanted to touch um, on would be, um, yeah, there it is. Um, is there any diet that's best for patients? Um, I get asked that a lot. Um, looking at food and the digestive system, how those work together. Um, as we know with um, DM, I have a lot of patients that are overweight and then I have some that are underweight. So having to work with both of those populations and then looking at those swallowing issues that we talked about. Um, so I just wanted to 
um, give some suggestions and um, I did some more research. I've did research in the past. I've asked the doctors and from what I'm finding is there's, there's not any specific diet that's helpful with patients with um, myotonic dystrophy. Um, there's, you know, I think a lot of people, if you looked up, you Google myotonic and um, diet, sometimes you'll come up with sites of doctors or nutritionists or people that um, think that their diet um, might help, but there's been no good research or um, long-term studies to, to find what that is. So what I do is I try to help people with just some general guidelines that I have found that are helpful with patients. Um, one thing I found to be very helpful is eat a balanced diet. Don't cut out any specific foods out of your diet. Um, some people will look at the keto diet and maybe want to cut all the carbs out. That one specifically worries me because our muscles need carbs and everybody needs to have that consistent amount of carbs coming in. Um, now, of course, if you have diabetes or something else and um, Robin, with you being a diabetes educator, you um, you know that the diabetic diet just is probably better than I do. Um, so that's part of it. Um, don't skip meals. I try to encourage patients to not skip meals. Um, your muscles, they need this steady um, dose of glucose. And I know a lot of people, um, it, they get tired and then it's harder to fix a meal. Or if the swallowing gets harder, they'll try to skip. But we have found that is even if you eat something about every three to four hours, um, it works out pretty good. So you don't want to skip those meals. Um, now, like I said, sometimes patients will tell me, well, I'm just so tired. I, you know, I can't really fix foods well. That's when I say go for those easy foods. Um, you know, there are what we call, I call um, TV dinners, but like healthy choice and a lot of them make some really good, um, well-balanced meals anymore that you can just put in the microwave and have as a meal or doing some drinks and shakes. A lot of people will, will do that because it's just so much easier. Um, and those things can also be good if you are having any swallowing problems because I know the speech therapist and I are always talking about softer foods and those kinds of foods are that way too. Um, it's important to try to maintain your weight. Um, you know, it's just really hard on your body and your muscles when you gain weight or when you lose weight. So just trying to keep a, a steady as weight as much as you can. I know with some of the, the medications that patients are on, specifically the prednisone, that can make that really hard. Um, I've been asked before, are there any specific vitamins? Are there any specific things that I should, you know, take? Um, no, what I have found is a general multivitamin is, is good. I recommend that. Um, but if you are on steroids, it's really important to take vitamin C and, um, and calcium and vitamin D because those are um, um, used up with the um, prednisone and you can get um, bone health. Um, so that's just something that's important there. Um, again, going back on, I try to talk to people about spreading out your meal, your snacks, making sure your body and muscles have that throughout the day. And then hydration is a big thing. It's, it's a big thing for everybody, but when you've got some muscle diseases, keeping hydrated is very important. Um, something that the speech therapist and I have done a lot of research on is, is the type of liquids maybe that you should drink. Um, water is great, but there's actually some very good studies out there that show that you absorb um, more liquids from milk than you actually do from water. So other thing, other liquids can be used too. So I, as I say a lot of time, a liquid is a liquid. Um, now things like coffee and some of those things that might have high caffeine, you can actually lose water from them. But um, more and more, I'm just trying to get people to drink um, juice or even if you're a soda drinker, drinking some soda, but um, still trying to get all that water in there. So. You know, just some, um, those are just some tips that I have, some things that I, I try to work with people. Um, 
I do get asked a lot about constipation with, with myotonic and, you know, the myotonic does cause your smooth muscles to, to um, decrease and those are in, found in your bowels and um, in your stomach. So a lot of times patients will have trouble with constipation. Sometimes I have patients that have the opposite problem um, and that gets hard too. Sometimes they go back and forth. Um, sometimes patients, if, especially if patients have like irritable bowel syndrome along with their, um, di their my myotonic um, diagnosis too, sometimes that can be a um, problem. Some of the main things I find with uh, constipation and di um, myopathy is making sure you drink plenty of liquids. It comes back to that hydration again, um, but we do need liquids for um, our bowels to work great. Trying to encourage people to eat more fruits and vegetables. Um, I know some people, you know, either due to they can't afford or it's hard to get fresh ones. I tell people it doesn't have to be fresh, frozen veg, um, fruits and vegetables are just as good. And even canned um, can be good if you just aren't having to watch the sodium. Um, a lot of times people will say, you know, I know I need to increase my fiber. One easy way to increase the fiber is through the fruits and vegetables. Um, fiber is also found in whole grain, foods, um, there's whole grain cereals and breads. Um, oatmeal is probably the best fiber that you can have if you do like oatmeal. And then nuts such as um, walnuts, cashews, any of them, they're really good too. Um, there's a lot more product out there nowadays that uses whole grain, but it's not, um, it's more palatable and people are more um, apt to use it. Um, one thing is important is to increase your fiber slowly. Um, some people and get the suggestion to try to start eating more fiber and they go maybe a little bit overboard and that can be bad too because too much fiber can actually slow down your bowels too. So you have to um, uh, get it into a healthy balance. And they say about 20 to 25 grams of um, carbohydrate, I mean, I'm just my carb, of uh, Fiber is, is, is a good um, rule of thumb for most people. And if you check food labels, you know, a lot of them have the fiber on there now. And if something has like two grams or greater per serving, then it's, a, it, it's considered a good um, fiber containing food. Um, now prunes and prune juice, they do help the best with constipation. Um, I mean, if people really want to do something diet wise that, that really will help, um, it does. They do have some of the new, um, oh, dates and prunes that are like flavored with different um, like oranges or peach. And I have had a lot of people that can, um, would rather eat the prune and do it that way. Um, prune juice, it, some people really like it. And if you do, it's a wonderful thing and to use. And the best way to have prune juice and have it help is to have it heated. Um, heated prune juice is, is works the best. Um, I have a lot of people tell me that coffee <laughs> helps them too. And we're not sure if it's due to the caffeine or the heated component there also. Um, I have found though that, you know, many patients, they have to have medicine as well as diet changes. So I think it's very important that you work on your diet, but if the diet is not doing all of it, then, then make sure we um, talk to the doctor and we can get some medications and put the two um, diet and medications together because I've found that works a lot too. Hey Susan, I, this is John. I've got a question. Yeah. So you, you mentioned earlier, like that you know, drinking coffee, uh, you know, uh, or I guess any any type of consumption of caffeine would act as a diuretic and counteract yeah. you know the, the water intake that you'd get from other liquids or including milk. But then caffeine could work, possibly help with constipation a little bit. What's your what's your thought, or is there like a healthy balance of caffeine intake yes. for someone with myotonic? That's a good question. Um, I definitely think there is a healthy balance. Um, coffee itself does have the most caffeine, but it has about 200 grams per cup. Um, what I have read say it does stay below 400 grams a day. So if you're gonna do coffee, then two cups, um, something like tea, um, has about 50 grams 
um, per eight ounces. Um, and so you can obviously, you know, drink more of those type of things. But I, I don't usually tell people to cut out um, coffee unless there's somebody that drinks coffee all day. Um, but yeah, two to 400 milligrams. And that seems to be sort of a, I guess you could say a sweet spot that it helps enough with um, some things, but it doesn't cause the, the severe dehydration. Um, what about like a standard can of soda? Whether well, I don't know, diet yeah. or it's regular, what, what like a cola, Coca Cola or Pepsi? How many? They have about 50 milligrams too. So, so like a cup uh, of tea. It's about like a cup of tea, yeah. Now, something like Mountain Dew has a little bit more. Something I do recommend our the patients stay away from is the energy drinks. Um, because some of them can have five, six, seven hundred milligrams of caffeine plus other things that we just don't know how they work. So I guess that probably is one thing I do tell people, encourage them never to do is the energy drinks that are out there. And I know a lot of kids or young people like to do that. And so that's a good question. Okay, Susan. Was there a question or? Yes, yes. Uh, this new protocol is called Senate. I wonder if you have some more information if you found that that helps a lot of patients. So, definitely in South Docs, and I don't know if it's, you know, what, what your take is on that. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that first part of it. Oh, um, we've been using um, an over-the-counter um, drug called Senna S, S-E-N-N-A-S, and have found that it's really helpful. Um, and our doctor said it was a more natural way. Are you familiar with that drug? And what is your take on that? I, I am very familiar with um, that drug. Uh, I also work some with hospice and we use it a lot. The doctors all say it's the exact same thing. It's made from a plant. It's a um, it's a non. Uh, it doesn't cause cramping as some of the other things that normal laxatives can do. Um, and it's often a real good thing to start with. And to start with like the Cine using that instead of going to have to go to like to the Miralax or some of the other medications that can be a little bit more harsh on the body. So. Um, Usually, yes, you can get it over the counter. Usually what we'll tell the patients is to start with the um, recommended dose on the back, um, one to two tablets once a day. But then a lot of times some people will need it twice a day. Um, so definitely that's a good question. I, I definitely would recommend the, the Cinna. Thank you. Um, you know, just something else that, like I said, we do deal also with some patients being maybe overweight a little bit. Um, unfortunately, when it gets harder to exercise, um, that becomes an issue for a lot of people. Um, and this is a hard, it's a hard topic and I try to help patients as best as we can and, and not be judgmental because, um, you know, I'm overweight myself. So I try to help them and help, help them find things that have been helpful to myself and for them. But the main thing is, is if the patients can't exercise as much, they really have to watch portion sizes. Um, they just have to eat less calories. But I, what I try to tell people is that doesn't mean you can't eat as much food, but you have to eat the right foods. You have to eat things that are, that are um, lower in calories. Um, one thing I always ask people if they've gained weight or something is, what kind of liquids do you drink? Because most people will, drink a lot of uh, things that have calories in them. So like if for instance, a 12 ounce can of Coke, regular Coke has 150 calories in it. And people will drink that and not think about it, the calories and it doesn't fill you up. So you, you drink that along with eating something else. So looking at those liquids is a, a big thing to do. Um, don't skip meals. That's a big thing I have found that um, when patients try to get meals because they're going to try to save their calories, well, they tend to get more hungry later on in the day and they tend to eat more at the next meal. So 
Um, another thing that's hard for some people is myself included is try to eat more meals at the table and maybe not while you're watching TV. We tend to mindless eat when we're um, watching TV or reading or doing something and not paying attention to how much because if I sit down with a, a bag of chips at a, and it's I can just keep eating and eating but sometimes when you're sitting at the table and you've got your portion size um, that helps um, you know trying to keep your hands and mouth busy like chew gum I recommend people like ap after they've ate a meal and they still feel like they're hungry go brush your teeth which is good for your dental health and it's also good for when you've got that fresh minty you know you're not more inclined to go sit back and eat as much um, use smaller plates and bowls and you know wait a while before we eat slow down um, slowing down helps with swallowing plus it also helps with us to feel full longer and uh, one thing I know that a lot of our the physical therapists and everybody try to encourage is um, exercising in a pool if able um, it's a very good way to exercise when you have muscle disease plus it does help burn off some calories and and that kind of thing so i think it just takes more effort being around it so what i try to encourage people is is watch their diet um so that you don't have so maybe that, so you don't get to the point where you're severely like more overweight because it is very hard to get the weight off even harder than trying not to put it on um and, but then I see a lot of patients with, that are underweight, um, very the typical uh, thin, thinner person. Um, um, of course, you do lose some muscle mass, so that does um, it can you can lose muscle mass, and that can affect um, the diet. The, um, I keep trying to say diabetic, and it's not so. And <laughs> with the myotonic, and um, so some tips that I use for that is. Um, eating snacks between meals, trying not to do three bigger meals, but trying to do maybe six smaller meals. Um, uh, one thing that it sounds crazy when I, you know, cause I'm always telling everybody drink water, drink water. But when you are underweight and struggling to maintain your weight, maybe water fills you up and it has no calories. So I'm always saying for that kind of person, it is better to, um, drink something that has some calories even if it's milk or even if it's lemonade or stuff like that um, we talk about adding condiments to food sauces and gravies it makes it easier to swallow and for those people get that sticking sensation those sauces and gravies can help plus they add calories so the speech therapist and i are always trying to work on people with that together um, i always talk about make the foods you eat count you know try to eat those higher calorie foods because we know you get full quick quicker so it's better to have those type of things adding butter to foods um adding salad dressings it's really sort of the exact opposite of what i tell other people uh, or why should I even follow myself um i know a lot of people don't like like insure or boost i personally would have a lot of trouble probably um drinking them but um, one thing I've had a lot of people do is they add ice cream and flavorings and stuff to insurance boost, and it really helps the, the taste, plus it helps your calories a lot. Um, and then one that I've found a lot of people do like is Carnation Instant Breakfast. Um, you buy a powder in the um, aisle where the uh, cereal aisle, and you mix it with milk, and they have different flavorings. Um, it tastes good. If you're not, if you're lactose intolerant, then it's not a good one for you. But it tastes good, and it's cheaper than um, doing like buying the Insure Boost. So that's one that I do have a lot of people um, like to to do that. Um, hey, Susan, got a, my son Matt. He's 24. Just sat down and joined us. Matt, you have a question, right? Yeah. So I know. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I don't really have an appetite. Is that normal? And Matt's an underweight. Okay. I heard, is it normal, but I didn't hear the. He's saying he's, a lot of times his appetite is suppressed okay. uh, and he has a hard time putting on weight. Where, you know, yes. He's about a five five eleven and 
he got down to 127 and he's back yeah. up to about 140 and really oh, wow. pushed the calories on him. Yeah. You know, and I, 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 that is very normal, Matt. That's very normal. Um, we don't know why the appetite is suppressed, but it, it, it is in many people with um, the, the myopathy. So and it's nothing you're doing wrong. It's um, you really have to sort of, like you said, push or I tell people think of food as more like medicine, maybe. Um, you have to, for you, it's very important to, to eat or to take that medicine as a snack. Um, and, it's just, it's just, I have a lot of people tell me I'd love to lose my appetite. You know, I'd love to not want to eat so I could lose weight. And I tell them, no, you wouldn't because it's so much easier, harder to make yourself eat than it is to, um, you know, try to not eat. So I have to commend you, Matt, for, for putting that much weight on. I think you've done a, a great job. Um, it really, um, it does help with the disease. It helps with um, muscles. It helps with everything to have that extra calories on. Um, right. Some people, uh, the speech therapists and I find, tend to have some more swallowing problems. Um, their their throat, our throat, is made up of muscles, and you know we really take it for granted until we start to have some <laughs> swallowing problems. Um, a lot of times patients will tell us they feel like things get stuck um, down here. Um, what happens is, is those muscles that are pushing the food down into your stomach, they, they get um, weaker. And so they don't push the food as much. And so food does get stuck. One thing the speech therapist says a lot that I hear her say is try to alternate solids and liquids. Um, because every time she'll say, take two bites of food and then take a drink of liquid. And the reason is that liquid helps to push the food down through um, the stump, through the esophagus into the stomach a little bit better um, and help with that. Um, we also say, you know, add in those sauces and gravies, anything that's moist, if it's a dry food, um, dry chicken breast tends to be very hard to swallow because it sticks. So anytime if you can take, like I like barbecue sauce on my chicken breast. I'll put barbecue sauce on it, anything like that, that would help to coat it and to go down more. Um, you know, cutting your food up into smaller bites, uh, eating slower and chewing more. And these all help with swallowing, but they, they do have, an, um, it's also like against what I was saying that if you're trying to gain weight, that if you're trying to chew more and eat, that um, it can make it harder. So. That's why it's often harder if you have some swelling problems to keep that weight on. So we really encourage people to do some kind of supplement, try to do some milkshakes. Um, personally, for, for a lot of people, all recommend is, is go to, you can still go through the drive-thru right now, I guess, go to Chick-fil-A or you know, go to McDonald's and their shakes taste good and they have more calories and actually some more protein than um some of the other supplements so it doesn't necessarily have to be um you know like a what we consider a supplement but even just a, a good milkshake can be a good amount of calories um and stuff so i agree we're, we're passing notes i've had a matt note from matt saying yeah. dq tonight so <laughs> i guess it's dq tonight drive through <laughs> yeah hey that sounds good matt <laughs> um but yeah those type of those type of foods are, are if, you, if you like those, um, those are really good. Some people don't like sweets as much and it, it's a little bit harder. Um, we have to try to come up with soup and mashed potatoes and stuff that's a little bit um, souped up and easier for them. Um, one thing I don't know if anybody's tried is there is a thing called um, Benecalorie, B-E-N-E calorie. And what it is, is it's a two ounce liquid um, that you can buy and put into foods. It's, it's tasteless, um, it's flavorless, um, and it, but it adds about 200 calories. No, it's actually about 250 calories in two ounces. So um, I haven't found where you can order it. I mean, I haven't found where you can buy it like off the shelf, but I have patients order it sometimes. 
and you can take that and add it to your shakes, add it to mashed potatoes or, and it just, it gives you a lot more calories without having to increase the volume. So that's another tip that you might try. Well, that's all that I had like planned. So I didn't know if anybody has any more questions or concerns or something else that I could look up for them or. Hey, Susan, on the uh, Vena, what, what was that called again? The Vena calorie. calorie? Mm -hmm. Where where can you get that on? Just like on Amazon or do you have to go to the, the manufacturer's website? Yep. You, I found it. You can go to the manufacturers, but I have found it in in other areas. I have had um, people say they've went to like um, oh the pharmacies like a Walgreens or a CVS, and that the pharmacist will order it in for them. But you you don't have to have a prescription or anything. All right. What other questions do anyone else on the webinar or the phone have? For Susan, this has been really good. I mean, this is a lot of good information that hits home with, with the Cooley family. Yeah, it's very good information. I my son never hasn't showed up, so I'll make him watch this on his own. <laughs> well, and um, anybody is willing, if you want to email me, um, if anybody has any more questions or anything. Um, but my email is s w h i t a c r e it looks like wit acre and, and then it's at k u m c dot e d u yeah, i'll go back up to the top with okay. him maybe there we go there we go there you go so susan are you in so you're in the clinic so if somebody's going uses the uh one of the doctors in, mm -hmm. uh, at the clinic then we may see you right yes yes definitely mm -hmm. and dr statlin and dr pharmakitis are um it's real good that they were using a team approach and um uh they they it's i would definitely love to see anybody in clinic but if you have questions or somebody else to, uh, email is always great for me okay. has the clinic started taking in patient or are they doing still doing inpatient right now, or is it, it all tele telemed? They until are seeing new patients in clinic, um, and then if if like needs like wheelchairs or breathing equipments or other things that we can't do by telehealth, they come in. Um, otherwise, it is telehealth. I I heard that um, probably in the next two to three weeks they'll try try to start um, reintroducing more people to come in if they would like to. Um, the telehealth has worked good for a lot of people too, though, especially those that don't live close to um, Kansas City or something. 